Hi, I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about TikTok. So the next app, app that I want to discuss is TikTok. Now, I should say up front that I don't use this app. It just doesn't appeal to me personally. But it is extremely popular and therefore it earned a spot in this series. Now because I don't use the app, I'm relying solely on the articles that I'm linking to here for information. So let's start with the basics. According to Fozzie.org, and again, there's a link in the blog, you can find that at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in February of 2021. Quote, TikTok is a free social media app designed for creating and sharing short music videos. Developed in China, TikTok is used for creating, sharing, and discovering music videos. It's like karaoke for the digital age, end quote. Now, its appeal comes from the ability to add filters and other things to make the videos more fun. It's a relatively new app that started in 2018. Now, this article from Fozzie.org that I mentioned goes on to provide a brief overview of the app and things that you need to be aware of. Common Sense Media has an article that also provides an overview of the app, as well as briefly addressing a number of other vital areas of concern to parents. Safety ConnectSafely.org provides this parent's guide to include an overview along with a number of different ways parents can protect their children. They also offer a full guide PDF along with a quick guide PDF. Both guides appear to be downloadable without providing any personal information. And again, you can find links for them over on the blog. Now, once again, account holders are required to be 13 or over and in some countries, 16 and over. This isn't all bad since some of the content is inappropriate for younger teens and children. However, I suspect it's not too difficult to get around the age limit. Like Instagram, all accounts default to a public setting. Now, fortunately, TikTok has worked to provide parents a way to protect their children. They offer something called Family Parent. It allows parents to connect their account to their child's account and set boundaries for protection. Pocketlink.com offers a brief article with step-by-step -step directions on how to set various limits. Now, while it's a short article, it looks to be reasonably helpful and worth the read. Once again, you can find the link over on the blog at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This is from February of 2021. Bark.us provides an article that gives an overview of family parent, along with a number of different settings that can be modified to better protect children and teens. Now, while the instructions aren't overly detailed or specific, I think you'll be able to follow them if you have a decent level of online savvy. SecurityNerd.com gives an overview of eight areas to consider modifying the settings on and how to make those modifications. Now, while not providing step-by-step -step directions, I suspect that most parents will be able to figure them out. Finally, the US Sun has an article that gives a list of controls parents may want to consider modifying to protect their children. They also provide several informative boxes with further details on specific areas. The article includes the TikTok time bomb series, quote, to make sure parents are aware of the risks their kids are being exposed to and what they can do to better protect them, end quote. Again, you can find links to all of those articles over on the blog. So where exactly does this leave us? Here's a few parting thoughts to consider. Once again, I'll ask, does your loved one show a specific interest in TikTok? If not, I wouldn't introduce problems or concerns by opening an account for them. If they are interested, well, then I consider some of these other questions. Is an app that focuses on singing and dancing the best fit for your loved one? If this isn't where their interests or abilities lie, it's possible that you can bypass the app together. Now, if you can't avoid a TikTok account for your loved one, have you read about all the options for safety measures mentioned in the articles presented in this post? Are they appropriate for your loved one? Do you think that this creates a safe enough environment for your loved one to participate in? Are there any other guidelines or requirements that you can create as a family for using TikTok? For example, maybe no one posts anything without a parent's approval or participation. I do like that you can limit how long the app is available per day to help prevent overuse and overexposure. And finally, remember that this is a personal and a family decision. What one family decides is right for them probably won't be right or be the same as what another family decides is right for them. And that's okay. Each family must decide what's right for them. So my question for you this week is this. Does your loved one use TikTok? 
If so, what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear about them. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. Once again, that's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This is from February of 2021. I'm continuing to learn how to better protect AJ so that I can continue to say that life is good and there is never a dull moment.